Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from SDN Gamers, and welcome back to another beautiful ship spotlight. This time, we're taking a look at the Maluna Loa, I believe it's called. I tend to be very bad at pronouncing names, so hopefully that's similar. And it's created by Galaxy, and it's not the, ten, the, the sort of basic ship that I tend to look at. This is a very colourful, very sort of anime-styled ship, if you ask me. It's very beautiful, but at the same time, look at the angles. The angles that this guy's managed to work into this are just absolutely crazy, adding some intense levels of detail in area so we'll start at the front of the ship like we usually do and then we'll work our way to the rear so at the front of the ship the first thing that really catches my eye is how he's captured these sort of levels so you can see we've got the white level there that's been reinforced with that angled sort of area of red and then it comes into this circular dome that's been reinforced and has this white line going through it just adds so much more detail to the outline of the ship adding them layers to it and you can see how it's been slitted there at the front where we've got a cannon or some sort of main armament that we'll have a go with later now working our way a little bit long the side you can see we've got these rows of three turrets on the top and the bottom and we've got the same on the underneath there as well another three on that side and another three up above on that side as well so it's mirrored really nicely and you can see each one of these has been placed using this hinge block so maybe if this was in some sort of firefight these can be angled for maximum sort of effective fire on a target to the front i just don't know but it looks like it could do now moving into this area, I'm not sure what this object at all is, it looks like some sort of logo or symbol, it's been mounted on a rotor so maybe it spins up, or maybe it spins up and fires the actual cannon itself when it's launched, I don't know, just many ideas running through my head with this design, I really like that sort of thing. When the, when the concept or the ship itself just allows you to have this imagination of it in battle exploding. So you can see up here we've got these sort of vented, like I think like Fang's teeth that look like they protect the sort of deck guns up on the top here that surround these tucked in sort of thrusters. We've got one of the battleship cannons there. Really, I thought he would have a few more than just one up on the top, but I guess he didn't really want to clutter that beautiful colourful paint scheme that he's done. So let's move a little bit down the side here. So you can see we've repeated this here, but it's staggered off to the side, the little, I don't know, dragon's teeth I'm going to call them for the moment, and you can see is also detailed inside the engine bays here with this staggered sort of form as well. These look like there's some sort of shield generators looking at this, I believe this is the shield generator block, so maybe each one of these creates some sort of shield around the ship, that's quite interesting. Now moving down here, we have one of the big cannons, so you can see we've got this lovely protective area for the cannon here itself. And you just look through it, it just looks so beautiful. I just imagine this thing firing and absolutely destroying a target. So if we go a little bit further back from the cannon and the dragon's teeth on the side, you can see we've got these other armaments here. We've got a double barrel and two large single barrel, all staggered off so they can fire to maximum effect to the forward of the ship. Just look how we slope the armor though in these areas here. Everything's just been placed so detailed. Remember that these are on an angle as well, so that whole ship has been angled to fit them parts and just beautiful then in here for some reason he's tucked a little bit of a gatling turret or maybe that's just to fend off some fighters and things that decide to get in here just looking up at this ship though up close you can really lose your bearing which is front back and side or what's top and bottom but i guess a spaceship doesn't really need a top and bottom in most cases so up here we've got like a fake sort of bridge it reminds me of like a submarine dock i don't know maybe it'll introduce that into a proper bridge in the future or maybe it's, maybe it's not a bridge at all it could just be a funnel or a piece of detailing on the top but just look as i move it through here you can see how he's spent so much time detailing that top bit with the colors and the paneling oh, look at that oh it's ribbed there at the front as well <laughs> i'm just getting so sucked into the design so these things interest me as well like i wouldn't particularly put these on a functional ship but you can say this is not a super functional ship this is just more of a piece of artwork you can see how we've angled these massive sort of wingy vent type things that look like they have shield generators tucked in below so maybe the shields the ship once again and then as we work our way to the back we've got these things that i really like when people do this in engine bays where they sort of vent them out so you can see like vectored in here really tightly engine bays are protected at the same time though it creates this beautiful design and look at this thing down here let's look how cool that looks these are i think these are some certain sort of engine or no it's just lighting that's just beautiful it needs made this whole sort of power cell area out of just lighting itself and they've lit up some sort of connector there at the back so maybe you can dock in here into what is this fake sort of engine bay but let's get inside and have a look the outside is beautiful but let's see if the interior is done as well so what's quite interesting about the ship, it has quite a secret access point. So if you access it down here, it's got this nice little helipad you can imagine moving your ship into position. And what's quite nice about this first airlock, you can see how they've got the medical rooms on standby straight away at the side door. So you can deploy troops, get them boarding an enemy vessel, get them respawning, and you don't have to work their way through the labyrinth that is the ship. Now, we've got two ways to choose from. We can go to the left, that's back to the rear of the ship, or to the front, that's more maintenance sort of sections. So here we've got little crew quarters, each one of these having a little bunk bed and a nice little area for the passenger or the person to sit. And something that's really nice, if I just spawn my actual character in here, you can see each one of these doors is put in an automatic sensor, so that just really helps 
with accessing them does, especially in a survival sort of sense. So we'll turn our light back on and we'll head through into this area. That's more maintenance. So the first maintenance area is a massive reactor room. This is your power source. And you've also got your gyroscopes up on the catwalk above. That's nicely sealed off there. You can see there's another catwalk to walk upon in the upper story. So there's two levels to each one of these floors that I quite like. And I believe down here, he's not wasted any space and he's just stuck in more gyroscopes and more important components for the ship to use. So as it cuts through here, we're into now the power or shield generator room. So in here, it's absolutely filled with shield generators. So this must power the whole ship's generator supply. But the only problem with this, I see, is there's not many generators spaced out elsewhere. So if this area is hit, the generators could go down. But I would quite like that idea for a scenario. So as we cut to the front, we've got the warning and we're just into the basic hull of the ship here. So we can conduct maintenance and cargo and other things. So let's head back through the actual ship itself and we'll head to the bridge area. We'll just zip our camera through. This is the great thing about exploring with the camera as well, as you can see what's behind walls to work out exactly what's going on. So we can move into this deck, and through this door, we actually have access to the little AI control room, so we can control the computers, and I'll just dip down here first. So down here is more of another maintenance sort of shaft, so that leads the same way we saw before. There's myself. So we've got more maintenance down here. And the back leads towards the bridge there. So let's actually just show you down another maintenance area. So this little maintenance area takes us out to the turret maintenance. You know, the massive cannon that we saw on the front of the ship. So you can actually see that's where the massive cannon is. It's not the best angle, but it actually leads up the side where the big gun is on the side. Let's tuck ourselves back up that corridor. Move ourselves up to the bridge of the ship. I'm trying not to get you too confused. I probably should use my character for this part. But I've decided against that due to it taking too long to get through all the doors. So let's actually head up to the bridge itself. So the bridge itself has this really beautiful sort of feature where if we just work our way up, we've got these all these screens giving all this information off. So we've got the different colours as well, like the contrasting colours. So we've got the power in the centre, the location, speed, acceleration, turrets. So since we've got so many turrets, we've got missile turrets, uh, auto cannons, bofers, more auto cannons. And over this side, we've got the jump drive showing if they charge. And what's really nice about the layout of this room is he's turned some of the cons consoles up and down. So he's turned these ones up and down the side. So you can imagine sitting here and viewing that, even though it feels like it's upside down. I think there's a little bit of creative licensing with all these sorts of builds. And we've got an upper catwalk there, so we can look around in that section. Now, going further to the rear, we've got what I'd like to think is some sort of drop pod in here. So you access this through here. I'll just swap my character in for the moment. And you access the rear of the drop pod through this area. And you move into this nice little seating area. And what I like about this, this seems to be some sort of um, projector block underneath. So maybe these could be rebuilt. And this is the bridge of the escape pod. But I can't see a clear way of this actually escaping. Maybe the back blows off the ship. I'll have to access the controls and just see how this thing actually escapes from the ship itself. We'll head back through all these doors. Lovely. I, I really do like the automatic sensoring doors. But they just are a little bit of work. So let's actually hop into the cockpit and give this thing a little bit of a drive. So now that I'm in control of the ship, I'm just going to show you how this thing handles. Now, the acceleration is extremely good. You can see our zero to whatever we want to accelerate to is quite fast for a ship of this caliber. 50, 50. So let's see how fast it gets to 100 meters a second. Okay, nearly there. Now we're at 100, so let's see how fast it can stop. Okay, that's very fast at deacceleration as well. Perfect. But let's have a look at our gyroscope, see how we can turn this bad boy. Or if we can even turn it. Okay, so turning it seems to be a little bit of issue. It's very slow on the turn. We can also access our wings. So if we press 2 and 3, I believe our wings shall reverse and change angle. Let's see if they do that. One of them's changing. Oh, maybe they're just flexing as I'm moving. Maybe it's like a release. So as you turn, the wings flex. I quite like the idea of that, though. It's quite cool. Let's have a look through our weapons. So we're going to go to number 5. That's the swarm. So we'll switch to that. Switch our little front camera. And we'll launch the swarm. Number 5. Launch away. So you can see how beautiful that will be. When these lock onto a target, I'm guessing they all fire forward. And there's also a swarm that comes out the bottom there as well. Look at them, they're really cool. Let's actually have a look at the bigger guns as well. So we've got number six, that is a laser cannon. Oh, so that's like a so it's like a pulse of laser that comes out the front. I quite like the look of that as well. There we go. <laughs> very, very sort of Star Trek-ish. Let's have a quick look at number seven. Now this is a massive cannon that's in the belly. Oh, I love the trailer that. It's like a massive sort of box of high-powered energy going towards the target oh i think i would need to use some of these weapons in an upcoming battle most definitely let's fire that again you can hear it reloading reload it's still reloaded <laughs> where does the where does it still the shells for this thing or maybe it's just high-powered matter it looks like it's sort of shell loaded though since it's taking so long to reload and it's still reloading let's actually power this ship up a little bit switch to a number nine let's see if i can take this forward and just move it off camera 
Let's see how fast it is to move left and right. So it is quite fast and nimble, but it's the gyroscopes that have seemed to be the problem with it. But anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. You, as you can hear, my voice is definitely going and dying on me. But hopefully, I'll see you next time. And you enjoy it.